Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey and this is Factorizing, part of my Edexcel IGCSE exam questions series. Let's learn how to factorize, let's solve exam questions. Here we go. Okay, we've got two terms and we need to work out their common factors. Let's first look at the numbers. So what number goes into 9 and 12? Well, the answer to that is 3. Now, do they have any common letters? Well, yes, they do. They both share an F. So I could take an F outside as a common factor. Once I've got my common factors, I open up a bracket. And I ask myself the question, what do I need to times 3F by to get 9EF? Well, I've got to times 3 by 3 to get 9. And I've got to multiply by an E to get an E. Now, there's a subtraction sign in between them, so I'm going to put a subtraction sign in between the two terms inside the bracket. And what if I've got a times 3f by to get 12f? Well, 3 times 4 is 12, so 3f times 4 is 12f. And that is factorised fully. Okay, top tip, when it says factorised fully, that means there's going to be at least um, two common factors. So in this case, a number and a letter. Okay, we have again uh, factorized fully here. So I know I'm going to be taking out a number and in this case a letter. Uh, we have both of these two share a common factor of 5. So 5 needs to come out. And they also both share a common factor of y. So a y needs to come out. Now here's a really common mistake. Because I've taken out 5y, I've still got to ask the question, what if I got a times 5y by to get 5y? Well, the answer to that question is 1, because 1 times 5y gives me 5y. So I must write 1 in there. There's a plus sign. What if I got a times 5y to get 20y squared? Well, I need a 4 times 5 to make the 20, and I need a y times y to make the y squared. Okay, we're asked to factorise fully again. We've got lots of factors going on here. First, let's look at the numbers. We've got 16 and 20. They can both be divided by 4, um, which is the highest common factor. We have to take the highest factor here. We could take 2, but 4 is bigger, so we pick 4. We look at the C's, and um, the we have C to the 4, but we have C to the 1 there. So we've got to take C to the 1, because that is what they both have. That's what they share. But here we've got p squared and p cubed, which means we can take p squared as the highest factor because they both have a p squared. Okay, what have I got to times 16 c to the 4 p squared by to get, uh, sorry, what have I got to times 4 c p squared to get 16 c to the 4 p squared? Well, I've got to times it by 4 to get 16. I've got to times it by c cubed because when I add the two powers, I'm going to get c to the 4. And I don't need to multiply by any p's because we've already got p squared. Okay, to get 20, I've got to times it by 5. 4 times 5 is 20. We've already got a c, so I don't need to multiply by a c again. And I need to multiply it by a single p because p to the 1 times p squared is going to give me that p cubed. Okay, done. Okay, factorising quadratics. You need to look at this number here. And we need to find two numbers that are going to times together to make minus 48. And they need to add to make minus 2. So the best way to do this is to set up a list of factor pairs that times to make 48. So 1 and 48 you're not going to be able to add those to make minus 2. So let's keep going. 2 and 24, the gap's still too wide. Uh, 3 and 16, still too wide. 4 and 12, and then 6 and 8. Well, that looks good because that has a gap of 2. So I'm going to be able to make more negative 2 as long as I get the signs the right way round. I'm going to go with minus 8 and plus 6 because minus 8 plus 6 will give me the minus 2 that I'm looking for. And of course, minus 8 times 6 is minus 48. 
Okay, let's go again. So we need to multiply to make minus 16. And we need to add to make positive 6. Let's look at the factor pairs of 16. 1 and 16. Nope. 2 and 8. Yep, that looks good. That has a gap of 6. So I'm going to start with x. And because we are looking to make plus 6, it means the larger number of the two will be positive. So plus 8 and minus 2. And that will give us positive 6 when we add them together. Okay, next one we're multiplying to make positive 14. And we are adding to make negative 9. So let's do the factor pairs. 1 and 14, 2 and 7. 2 and 7 can add to make 9. So that sounds good to me. So we go y, y. And because we need to add to make a negative, but times to make a positive, it means that numbers must both be negative because two negatives times make a positive and they're going to add to make a negative. Okay, done. Okay, this question's a bit of a tricky one because it's only a one marker, but if we look here, they don't have any number factors. Four and nine don't divide by the same thing. They don't have any letter factors either, C and D on either side. We have to spot that this is a difference of two squares. So we've got two square numbers either side. So 4 is a square and also c squared is a square and 9 is a square and so is d squared and there's a difference because we're subtracting one from the other. So the rule is that if we have a squared minus b squared then that is the same as a minus b, a plus b. So in this case we take the square root of each one so the square root of 4 c squared is square root of 4 is 2 and the square root of c squared is c and the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of d squared is d. We put a minus in between them, and then we open up another bracket, and we write the same two terms out, but we put a plus sign in between them. And that is the difference of two squares. Okay, next question. Um, we have uh, a 2 and an 18, so we can take out a factor here of 2. So I say 2 e squared minus 9 and you, I might think that I'm finished here but it does say factorize fully which means I've got to take out at least two at least one uh, sorry at least two factors and I've only taken out one so I don't think I've factorized it completely here and what I need to do is spot that again this is a difference of two squares I've got e squared which is a square and I've got 9 which is a square so I can write this as two lots of the square root of e squared is e the square root of 9 is 3, put a minus in between them, and then write them the same again, but put a plus sign in between them. Okay, two tricky questions to finish with. Um, the first one, um, we could multiply out these brackets and then simplify, then factorise, but there's actually a quicker uh, way of doing this. And that's noticing that both of these two terms, the yellow and the blue, they both share a factor of x minus 5. So I'm going to take an x minus 5 out of both of these two terms. So what have I got to times x minus 5 by to get the yellow term? I've got to times it by 4 and another x minus 5. And what have I got to times x minus 5 by to get the blue term? Just a plus 3. Now this bracket here I can expand and simplify and I'll get 4x minus 20. I'll get 4x minus 20 and plus 3 will give me 4x minus 17. So 4x minus 17 and there we go, we factorized it much quicker than expanding, simplifying and factorizing. Okay, the next question again we could expand, simplify and then refactorize but there's a quick way of doing it and that's spotting that we've got two squares here and we're taking one from the other, so therefore it's the difference. So we use the difference of two squares formula. And that is that a squared minus b squared is equal to a minus b, a plus b. Okay, so um, I'm going to assign 
this uh, yellow bracket here as A and this blue bracket here as B and I will write that I'll do a square bracket A which is 12x minus y minus B which is 4x minus 3y close bracket multiplied by a plus b so that's 12x minus y plus 4x minus 3y okay let's expand this uh, square bracket on the left we've got 12x minus 4x which is 8x we've got minus y minus minus 3y so that's plus 2y And then here we've got 12x plus 4x, which is 16x. And we have minus y minus 3y, which is minus 4y. Okay, great. Um, it looks like we've expanded this perfectly. Uh, let's get rid of these square brackets and actually use curved brackets. Um, but this isn't factorized fully, because what you'll notice is that each bracket actually shares a um, uh, uh, has a factor inside it so for example this blue one we could take out a factor of 2 so I'll take out a factor of 2 and that would be 4x plus y and this next bracket I could take a factor of 4 out so that would be 4 lots of 4x minus y so I've actually taken out uh, a 4 and a 2 so that's the same as taking out 8, and it's 4x plus y, 4x minus y. Okay, final question. Um, I'm not sure what this question is doing here, because all of my free term quadratic equations I've put into the quadratics um, video. But this one has just popped up, and why not? Let's do it. So I use this really good method of factorizing quadratics where the x squared term is not 1. I label the coefficients a, b, c. I say that a, c is, um, is what I need to times the two numbers uh, to, to achieve. So a, c is 2 times 6, which is 12. And I'll need the two numbers to add to make b which is minus 7. Okay, two numbers that times together to make 12 and add together to make minus 7, they must be minus 3 and minus 4. Because the a term is 2, I write 2, 2, 2, and I put an x there and x there, bracket, 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 and then these numbers fill in the gaps, minus 3 and minus 2, and then I simplify this by dividing through by 2. Now I only need to divide through by 2 in one of the brackets, and the bracket I'm going to choose is the one which is divisible by 2, which is the one on the right, so that gives me 1x minus 2, and that's factorised. Okay, that's factorization done. I do much more uh, quadratic factorizing in the quadratics video, so check that one out and then move on to the next topic.